The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. And good morning to you. You're listening to the Big Dog WIFO FM in Jessup, 105.5 in your FM dial. Butch Hubbard here with you along with Bob Morgan on this very first day of October 2019, this Tuesday morning. We appreciate you waking up and tuning in to 105.5 FM. It is now time for the world-famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by Nips Car Wash, located on Highway 301 South, just past McDonald's there on the left-hand side. For the cleanest car around, head on down there, Nips Car Wash, and by Murphy Builder Supply, where the builders buy, located on Northeast Broad Street in downtown Jessup, just down from the big red caboose. Good morning, Mall. How you doing? Doing good. My Steelers finally won a game. They finally won a game? I don't know if the Bengals are that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but awful. Big Ben wasn't playing, was he? Uh, he's hurt. He's, he's hurt. He's out for the season. Who's playing? Uh, Who's that quarterback? Mason Rudolph. Who? Mason Rudolph. Mason Rudolph, where did he play? He played at Oklahoma State. Okay, he Mason Rudolph. A couple of years ago, seems like a good young quarterback. Throws the ball well. So good. Had a nice game plan, but I said I don't know if it, I can get. I can't get too can't. excited because I think <laughs> the Bengals. It's are, the Bengals. I think they're just. I mean, they did have eight sacks though on defense, so that was pretty good. But. Yeah. Got to get that steel curtain back. The good thing is there's only one game out of the division lead, so that's, if they can oh, win, that's good. if they can win this week, they can get back in the. Who's, the, who's ahead of? Them? Cleveland and Baltimore. Cleveland and Baltimore. Yeah, Cleveland has the lead right now. They beat Baltimore this past weekend. So, Baker, man, Dick Chubb, the former Georgia Bulldog, had a big weekend Sunday in Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah, he had three touchdowns. Had Ooh, a touchdown to run. Had Chubb, a, Chubb, Chubb. Had a great game. So, nice to see Nick Chubb. A lot of former dogs doing well in the NFL level. Chubb, yes, they Simon are. Shell, there's just a lot yes, of they are. Yes, they are. And, um, and well, that's good. You know, kind of preseason predictions for a lot of folks said that, you know, if Cleveland was going to have a year, this is going to be it. Yeah. So let's see what happens. Yeah, they got a lot of talent. And Baker their quarterback Baker. is from Oklahoma, Oklahoma the guy from Mayfield, yeah, yeah. The, the Heisman Trophy winner. So. The guy George played in the Rose Bowl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And we beat him. Yeah. yeah, we did. But. It looks like it's Kansas City and New England and everybody else. And I messed the bottom line. Those Kansas City. Teams. What's going on with the Falcons? Uh, that's the. I mean, they got the talent there. What's going on? I was listening to the shows yesterday. I mean, that's the biggest. You know, they're talking about the most disappointing teams right now, and they listed four, and the Falcons were one of them. And Rich Eisen said, without a doubt, it's the Falcons because it's a big mystery. You've got all that talent on offense. Matt Ryan, yeah. some new. Julio Jones, yeah, uh, Ridley. I mean, just you know, you can't score but ten points. Uh, I don't know. It's a big miss. People are pointing the finger at the offense coordinator. I don't really know what's going on, but I just know Dan Quinn's under a lot of pressure. You know, Arthur Blank's paying a lot of money. He wants to win. A lot so. of money. I don't know. It's the Falcons are just you know hard to figure out. You think they could you know light up the scoreboard with all that talent, but yeah. they just can't seem to get anything going offensively. So. You know, if, you know, if they're giving up like you know thirty something points a game, and um, you know thirty five points a game and scoring thirty one, yeah. But you know, when you're only scoring a little bit, when you've got that offense, you know, yeah, you just with that offense, you just expect to outscore the other team. To me, it's just over to Julio every play. <laughs> <laughs> You'll catch it. I mean, he's the best receiver. I think he's one of the best, if not the best receiver in the in the game. I mean, they just paid him all that money, so just get him the ball. But I don't know. Just Falcon fans have to be a little bit discouraged. Yeah, you know, we are. We're discouraged. A lot of optimism going in, but just it's early though. You know, it's the NFL. Yeah, but you you, you can't. A few games, you get back in the race quickly. Well, you can always uh, lose a season in September, but you can't win a season in September. It looks like we're going to lose a season in September unless they really do some turnaround here. Well, the Saints are normally the big team to have to beat. The Saints are without they're without Drew Brees. Drew Brees. So, yeah. and, 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 and Cam is hurting. So, um, All right. But that Kyle Allen, the, the quarterback that's taking his place, they said he may never get back on the field. I mean, Cam Newton lost eight straight games. This guy's won two in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Always somebody younger, I mean, hungrier, I mean, and faster already, and quicker. They're already asking the question in Jacksonville, will Nick Foles ever get his job back from Gardner Minshew? <laughs> so it's, you know, who knows? Who knows? Well, speaking of football, speaking of football, I want to go ahead and say this at the beginning of the show here. This coming Saturday in Atlanta at Bobby Dodd Stadium, Georgia Tech is going to be hosting North Carolina. 
And, of course, we all know that North Carolina gave Clemson, the number one team in the nation, everything they could handle this weekend. And it, you know, could have gone into overtime, uh, extra, uh, extra quarters there, into overtime, but it didn't because North Carolina went for the two and didn't get it. And so Clemson ends up winning. But this coming Saturday, Georgia Tech's going to be hosting North Carolina uh, North Carolina, uh, what are they called? Tar Heels. Tar Heels. Tar Heels. I was thinking of the color blue. I was trying to put blue in there. Tar Heels. And so it's going to be Georgia Tech and North Carolina this coming Saturday at Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta. Kickoff is at 4 o'clock. Kickoff is at 4 o'clock, so plenty of time to get up there, see the game, tailgate a little bit, and get back home in one day if you want to, or spend the night. Uh, but uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, the 2nd, and Thursday, uh, the um, the third, we're going to give away a bunch of tickets. I've got a whole stack of here of Georgia Tech, North Carolina tickets that I'm going to give away absolutely free, and we give them in, away in sets of four. So you can take three people with you, three family members, three buddies, whatever you want to do. But tomorrow morning, uh, tomorrow morning between seven and nine, and and then on uh, Thursday morning between seven and nine, we're going to give away several sets of four tickets to the Georgia Tech North Carolina football game to be held at Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta this Saturday, kickoff at four o'clock. Boy, that was a nail biter for Clemson there, wasn't it? Yeah, it was pulling hard for North Carolina, isn't it? That was the question I asked yesterday. If Clemson would have lost that ball game, you know they already dropped from one to two in the. AP poll, but the question is, if they would have lost that ball game, how far would they have dropped Clemson, considering their strength of schedule? And yeah, play? yeah. But they, you know, they won, and looking at their schedule, they don't look like they have any they don't have difficult. Yeah. Maybe FSU, maybe, I don't know. They don't, you know. Yeah. But, but North, then you say North, they don't have anybody, yeah, but look what North Carolina yeah, did. I thought North Carolina gave them a game. But. And Texas A&M gave them a run for their money, and Texas A&M hasn't been doing all that great yeah. since then. That's why they play the games, but I was right. pulling hard. I was hoping Mac Brown would kick that, you know, this and all that guys on that. I, mean, I just thought North Carolina had all the momentum, kick the extra point, go to overtime. Right. You, know, you just got a chance to beat them there at home, but Mac Brown decided to go for two and didn't come close well, to Well, that's when you're playing someone. It's like uh, um, um, Chuck Oliver says sometimes, when you're playing somebody that you expect is going to beat you, when you get in a position to beat them, you do something where it's stupid that they end up beating you because you think they're going to beat you. And so that's probably what the coach was thinking. Oh, well, let's go for two and go ahead and put this away because if we go over into overtime, we'll probably end up losing the game because they're the number one team in the nation. You know? And that happens a lot. Bob, you've got a, a text message that just came in for you. Okay. Remember, you can always – it's a good one. It's a good one. A good okay, it's a good one. It's a good – it's complimentary, Bob. It's complimentary, okay, on your news reporting. You can always text us with your questions and comments here on the world-famous Butch and Bob Show at our regular business line. It's text enabled, 912-427-3711, 912-427-3711. Somebody text in. This is a text, folks, that I'm reading. It says, I would like to thank – uh, I would like to thank Bob on his investigation reporting on the county for pushing to have the hard questions answered. I thought the interview with Ralph and was, and some with Mike was spot on. Also, congratulations on having your letter read and getting that change on the field advantage. Thanks. I'm sure they didn't read the letter, but I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they kind of know what the they, letter they, is because you've I, mentioned it several I, I, times through the years. Uh, Kenny Carson was there last night. They finally read one of your letters. I said, good. So, <laughs> I'm just glad they found I mean, that's just – It is – That was just mind-boggling to me all yeah. those years. Why in the world would you not be the home team when you yeah. have home field advantage? Why would you play for the, the higher yeah. seat if you're not going to get the you higher seat? You one game is right. the home field I mean, advantage, you know? I mean, that was so frustrating to be sitting at Howard Bill Warren Field in game three not being the home team. I yeah. Just, I just – irritated me so i'm glad they finally made that change but i do want to again thank ralph for coming in I, i've had a lot of good comments about that interview you know was a good they, interview. Were, they, were, they were just glad you know i said we're trying to get the others to come in i mean they're free to come in anytime, anytime. But, you know we've asked but so far they haven't accepted but you know i do give ralph kudos for coming in i said i mean I take like I tell them all the time. I mean, we're not going to agree on everything. But we don't have to be disagreeable, but we're right. just trying to get the information out to the people that's who are listening. I mean, the listenership I think was, you know, I've heard I've heard from many that listened to the interview and went back and watched it after the fact. For the Ralph we interview, because we have yeah, it on, we have it on podcast. Yeah, so people can go and watch it and listen to it. But 
I, I just appreciate him coming in. Okay, and that, that was a good interview with Ralph last week. And it is podcast. We do podcast the uh, world famous Butch and Bob show. You know, not only can folks hear it right here live on 105.5 uh, weekday mornings, but we also uh, podcast it. Uh, and we do stream it down. We stream it down our website at bigdogcountry.com. The world famous, actually, our show in the morning from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., the entire two hour morning show is streamed on our website at bigdogcountry.com. Uh, you just go to um, to live stream, or you go to Butch and Bob Show live stream, and there it is. And then um, uh, sometime mid morning, Jonathan will have that um, uh, the world famous Butch and Bob Show this morning podcast and put into B and B Show and go to archive show, and it'll be there. And you'll have a couple of weeks there to go take a look at it and watch it because it's video too. It's not only audio; it's video. We're vi- we're live on BigDogCountry.com B and B Show live right now, video and audio. And his podcast, so folks can go back and take a look at it. You know, my, like I said, my concern is, uh, and you know this as well as anybody, but we're a small community, small county. The only time things are going to get done when everybody pulls together and works together, when you have all this dissension and all this back and forth, it's just, it's just not good for anybody. No. And that's my concern, and that's what I want to try to let people know right now is we're not in a good situation. You know, the county and city aren't getting along well. Yep. You got a divisive county board. I mean, things like that just aren't good for the overall community. So just trying to shed light on where we're at. We're not to me, we're not in a good place. You know, when when we thrive is when everybody comes together, everybody's working together right. in one direction. But right. you know, we have people who have been there before heed that advice all the time you know lindsey thomas made that speech at the chamber banquet and everybody right. said it was a great speech and everybody understands the message but unfortunately the people in power personality and politics get in the way according to what ralph said so yeah. that's that's my problem you know because we're not going to go anywhere and get any better if we're all going in different directions so yeah Somebody just texted in. Apparently, they did not hear your sports, Bob. Do we have any? Um, do we have? Do we know if any of the coaches from the middle school game were disciplined? So right now, they've both been suspended. But they like said I talked to Jay Brinson yesterday. The investigation's going underway. They're interviewing a lot of people, taking a lot of statements. But the superintendent told me that you know he makes the big bucks. The buck stops with him. He'll make the final decision. Right. So it's being handled. But the superintendent isn't. You know, in charge of what's taking right. place. So, Doctor Princeton, like he said, the buck stops there. He'll make the the right decision right. on there. But nobody's happy with what took place. The athletic director's not happy. The superintendent's not. I mean, it was just a bad situation altogether. You know, especially when it took place in front of kids. You right. know, so right. it was just an ugly incident. And like I said, it's been fully investigated or being fully investigated. And like you said, they're contract they're contractual employees, so they're entitled to due process. So. But the buck stops with the superintendent. The superintendent will make the final outcome. Okay. All right. And you reported in the uh, school board meeting the other day that they're coming up with a, a drug testing um, uh, um, ordinance, right. I guess, if what do you want to call they it, for the, for students, place, right. for yeah. people. When they say students are privileged, is it just sports or is it all extracurricular it's activities? It's extracurricular activities. If you're involved in any extracurricular activity, you're you're able to be drug tested. Also, if you have a car and you drive back and forth to school, you're also okay. in that pool. So, and so this is just for the students that participate in these extracurricular activities and drive to school, but not the coaches and the teachers who do the same thing, right? No. Okay. They're, they're not being drug tested. Okay. It's just a student and, policy. And why does the school feel like they have to the, to to single out the uh, students who participate in extracurricular activities and drive to school uh, versus the other students? I mean, uh, what's what's going? What was the reasoning behind that? And apparently, you can't drug test somebody if there's not involved in extracurricular activity. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's the state law. <laughs> now, is that yeah, like the it. beta club and beta and club, anything, anything, anything any, that's any that, extra, anything that's outside uh, of you're classroom, any extracurricular activity, band, cheerleading, whatever, you're susceptible to being drug tested. Susceptible, or you are going to be. Well, it's a random test. It's a I random mean, test. Right. I mean, okay. It's not like they're going to come in and drug test everybody at one time. So okay. I said all those details have to be worked out. I said there's so many questions still unanswered. At the bottom line, the board, this board from day one stated they wanted drug testing policy in place. And okay. they're investigating and talk to other school systems. And they're right now they have a, they're going to vote to put the policy in place, but then they have to make decisions 
like the superintendent told me, where's the money coming from? Who's doing the drug testing? How will be implemented? What happens if a kid tests positive? What's the what's the punishment? Is it a suspension? Is it a warning? Is it you know or yeah. you know? Is what's it the appeals process too? It's a three step process. You know, there's just a lot of questions to still. So we're going you know, to say we're almost in the Christmas break. So the timetable is what is the big question. When does it become in place? Does it is it take place sometime this school year or will it be next year? Or I mean, that's still right. Not so to be clear, it's just the students that uh, are in extracurricular activities or drive to school, but not uh, coaches or, or teachers that are involved right. in extracurricular activities. Just the students, right? Right. Okay. And teachers and they have contracts. They're employees. I mean, they don't. They're not. Okay. I'm just. I'm just trying to clarify because you know people this have questions just, about this that. This is a student drug testing policy. All right. All right. Somebody wants to know what happened at the middle school uh, football game that is causing uh, all this hoopla. I don't want to go into all that. You don't want to go into all that? Uh, there was just an incident uh, um, right there. at the end of the game the between two coaches. And so um, when Bob gets the final report on that, he'll report Everybody on it. Everybody knows what took place. If well, apparently this person doesn't. Well, <laughs> it's all out there, I promise you. Okay, somebody wants to know, are the uh, coaches suspended with pay? You would think because they haven't been found guilty or not guilty yet. I didn't, I didn't ask that okay. question. All right. I just know neither one are on campus at this time. All right. And have but I don't know. I mean, personally myself, I, I don't know. But uh, usually when they suspend, yeah, they continue to get paid because no decision has been made yet whether uh, they should be penalized in any type of way. That's the reason why they're doing the investigation. I would assume to pay. But you would, yeah, you but know, we know what happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, let's see here. Oh, no, can't believe I missed it. I've heard all the interviews except Mike Roberts. What morning was that on? Mike Roberts wasn't here. They're yeah. talking about Mike Deal. Mike Deal. Mike, Mike, Mike Deal, Deal was, was here. here. Not, not Mike, Mike, Mike Roberts, but Mike Deal. I think Mike Deal was here last Friday. Yeah, um, Mike Deal was uh, here last Friday. After they promoted the Big Buck contest, I had a chance to talk to him about you know, he was an administrator at the time. You know, The question I asked him was, you know, for months we've heard that you know, this policy of breaking ordinances has been going on for years and years and years. With the well, county, with the county, county administrator. Well, Mike Deal was, in, in county Mike, administrator Mike Deal was the county administrator for years and years and years. He made it clear that when he was the county administrator, he didn't break any ordinances. So okay. I just wanted that clarified because I kept hearing that at all these meetings, knowing it was not the case. Okay. So I got the person who knew, who was in that position to clarify right. that position. So. So who we've had on from the county commission is Kevin McQuarrie and Ralph Hickox. We're trying to get the other three commissioners and the um, and the uh, county administrator on. We've asked them. The invitation is there. We'd love to have them on to talk about, uh, you know, the chair, they're, they're, what they want to say about the it. The chairman's told me several times once all that got over with, he'd become on, but I still haven't been able to line that up. So I'll try to call him this week and see if I can get Chairman Herschel Harris in here. I said we'd like to have – I said, the invitation's open to everybody. We'd love to have Ed Jeffers. We'd love to have Luke Thomas. We'd love to have Herschel. You know, yeah, they, they, can all, all. they can all come together yeah. if they want to. You know, Two the of them have been in, but not the other three. The more, the merrier. I say, yeah. that's what this show's for. This show's open to anybody that, you know. Yeah, just all, open for them. Love to have them. All right, another uh, question that's come in. Did you say that the school system doesn't have a random drug test policy for the teachers that teach our children? They do not. They do not. It's a union thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're contra- they they have. I mean, they know what the rules are. I yeah. Mean, I mean, they, it's in their contract. So right. They don't have to be. They don't have to be. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've had that happen before. We've had teachers dismissed and reprimanded for, you know, illegal activity in the past. So, I mean, that's part of their contract. <clears throat> but they're not random. Random. No, they protests. don't have. They don't have it. Um, right. Okay, uh, let's see here. Does Bob have any update? Does Bob have any update on the Earl Watson case? I'm still waiting for Judge Kelly. He still has out all that information. Yeah. Waiting for, right. and, and I didn't realize that until you reported it a couple of weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, that uh, he's waiting for all the information from the, for the court and right. the, yeah, the, from the court the and from the attorneys. Right. The, like I said, the attorneys did not do closing arguments during the case. So right. They have to submit the closing arguments to the judge in writing. So once he got the transcript, which I know he does have the full transcript now, he wanted to wait 30 days to get the, the assistant DA's 
closing argument, Tracy Brown's closing argument in writing, then he'll make his decision. Right. Again, he is judge and jury in this instance. It is solely up to Judge Kelly to decide whether or not this proceeds to trial or he rules in favor of the defense attorney's motion that it was self-defense and throws it out. So as okay. soon as we get that ruling by Judge Kelly, we will get it. Judge Kelly knows everybody wants it, but as he told he's me last time, all the information first. Him, he said, you know, Give me the info, and I can make a decision. He told me patience is a virtue. I said, I don't, I don't have any patience. <laughs> All right, you're listening to WIFO FM in Jessa, 105.5 on your FM dial. Butch up here with Bob Morgan, world famous Butch and Bob show. I am reading the book he recommended, though, and that drug, I went to that drug court with uh-huh. graduation, and he recommended that book, Second Mountain. It's a pretty good book. So. And what's Second Mountain about? It's about having second chances. Second, second chances. Chance life. So, yeah. um, it's a pretty good book. Okay, well, good, good. All right, you can always text us, text us, because we can't answer the phone. We're talking dive on radio. Still you can text us. Still trying to up the DA, too. She's, the DA she's, still yeah, trying to get Jackie. Yeah, she's coming in soon. So, like I said, okay. she knows we want her in the Butch and Bob show as well. So, I said, we're doing our best to line everybody up. But, again, if the commissioner's out there, you know, we want her, so we want Boo. We want Ed Jeff. We'd love Mike. to have yeah, yeah. whoever wants the to Three come. commissioners and Ed. Yeah. Yeah. And you can text us at 912-427-3711. We're supposed to have DDA and Archfest today, but they called us so they could not make yeah. it today. So they have Archfest. Archfest coming up soon. So there's a lot going on. I'll tell you, like Jonathan mentioned, we got the homecoming parade this Thursday. Odom Day. Homecoming reception, game Friday uh, night. Odom game Friday night. Reception of the year for the uh, Odom Elementary Teacher of the Year, Susan McCreary, tomorrow night at Odom Rec Center. And then they got the Odom Day this Saturday with all the festivities. And mm-hmm. tickets for the dance are on sale in advance. Uh, Second Chance is going to perform that night. Also, they got the Odom T-shirts still available. Uh, Molly, not Molly, Cheyenne Mosley sent me a text and said that if anybody wants to know anything about Odom Homecoming, they have a website called odomhomecoming.org, which has all that information okay. right there. So you can go to their website, right. and anything you need to know about Odom Homecoming this weekend is on that website. Odom Homecoming. Odom Homecoming. Dot org. Yeah. Org. Okay. Org. Right. Okay. So. And then, of course, you got Popple Farms with the Farmtastic Days going on. Started last weekend, right. goes all the way through the month of October. We got the rodeo coming up. Yep, the, the Willing Time right. Memorial Rodeo coming up. And that's next weekend, 11th and 12th. We've got also the. the, the got the New Haunted board. Trail, Web of Fears, starting this Saturday. Tourism Board still has that paddle, except for this next weekend, the 12th, down the Altamar River, which is always a popular event. The. Fall Leaf Paddle, October 12th, and a nine-mile family paddle on the Ultima River gets underway that morning at 8.30 a.m. Registration is still taking place. It's $10, does not include lunch. Children are 10 paddle for free in that event next weekend, so next Saturday. So make sure everybody signs up for that. But there's a lot going on in the month of October. Always is, isn't there? Also, don't forget the elections are coming up in both the city of Odom. And, again, early voting begins Monday, October 14th. Again, if you have not updated your voter's file, a reminder again that this coming Monday, October 7th, is the last day to do that. That's the deadline to update your voter's file or to register to vote if you want to be eligible to vote in the city of Jessup City Voting Elections. So call the registrar's office if you have any questions or visit the registrar's office down at the Wayne County Courthouse. Registrar's office number is 427-5950. All right, someone, uh, we've seen another text there. Someone says, what time is the homecoming parade, and do you know the route? Uh, I do not know the route, but the homecoming parade is at 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Right, in downtown. In downtown. Just, right. Like exactly. I said, afterwards, they've got a JV football game against Baxley, which starts at 6. So right after the parade, you go to J.C. Stadium and watch a good JV football game between Wayne County and Appling County. JV football team has been playing extremely well this year for Wayne County. Good, good. Somebody just says, busy month. Yep, yes, it is. Lots going on. You can't say there's nothing to do in Wayne County during the month of October because something's going on just about every day and every weekend, uh, definitely every weekend. I want to say the parade ride's the same as last year, but I don't really know. Okay. You know me. I don't really know all this. <laughs> no, you know, the parades either line up on Bay Street. Sometimes they line up on Bay Street in front of the fire station there, and sometimes they line up down Broad Street. And uh, so um, um, it'll be one of those two and go through downtown. But starts at 5 this Thursday. This Thursday in downtown Jessica. And who we play for homecoming this coming Friday night? Bradwell Institute. All right. Bradwell's coming over from Hinesville. Blake. Sounds good. 
What was your impression of the Jackets uh, versus Appling County on Friday night? So they said at best a tale of two halves. <laughs> First half was all Appling, second half was all Wayne. So. How does that happen? You I see it in know. so many games. So many games you see one team dominate the first half, and then the second half, I mean, somehow a 20-minute break changes karma or something. And then the next thing you know, the next half is all the other team. All the coaches mentioned last night, touchdown club. Everybody keeps asking them all weekend, what did you say at halftime? <laughs> what did y'all say? We'd like to have recording of that speech. They said they really didn't say anything special. Yeah, right. <laughs> Coach Chris said, I mean, he said after this game, he said, he told me, he said, look, you can go out there and keep on getting your butt kicked or you can go out there and do something about it. So they went and did something about it. So, well, they got the hosses to do it, let me tell you. Uh, Wayne County does. Got an right. offensive line that averages around 300 pounds and running backs and I mean, we just, you know, we got, we got some horses out there. We had, you know, a lot of young guys because we did have replaced all those 30-something seniors from last year, but we do have some, we got some horses out there. It was a great comeback, though, down 24-7. Like we mentioned nothing going right, all the turnovers going Appling's way. I mean, it was just, you know, it was like somebody just switched this, you know, turned a switch and it just changed. So, so you had to hear kick. the cannon a lot in the first half and not the second half. And onside kick turned everything around. But, you know, the defense really, I think, uh, Bubba Walker gave the stat last night in the first half. I can't remember how many yards Eppling County had on the ground, but in the second half, they had 22 yards on 23 carries. Wow. So that's how well the defense played in the second Did half. Did they make adjustments? Did you see any a change well, there was in a the, few changes, the changes, but not many. They said they changed a couple of personnel around, but that was about it. But, you know, they shut them down as much as they did. It was just impressive to see. So, plus they got the turnovers. I think we got three fumble recoveries. So, it was just a avalanche, you know. Wayne County just came storming back, but it was a great game, great crowd. I still like to know how much they made on that game. That <laughs> was a big gate. Yeah, there, there are big gates. And the thing about it is, we found out that a lot of times the uh, the visiting teams will actually get a little bit more of the percentage of the gates because they know that uh, the home team's going to make yeah, the concessions. Not a regular season game. Well, what's that? Not a regular season game. Just, just playoff games. games. Okay. Regular all season, right. you get they get all the gate. All the gate? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. The home team, the visiting team, doesn't get anything? I don't think so. I mean, I think that's where the regular season is. Your home games are your home games. Well, that means the Savannah teams make nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the visiting team doesn't get anything. I don't think regular they, season games. They only make – Maybe, 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 maybe yeah. something too. But I thought, I thought, I thought, we do know they do the playoffs. Your home, your home game. Playoffs, you have to pay travel and all that. Yeah, you got to pay the travel. Yeah, that's why you have home games and away games. Yeah. Your home games are your home games. That's why you schedule teams you want to get. Yeah, bring your big game. That's bring why that big game. That's why they don't want to lose that App and Wayne game. Like I said on the you podcast, you don't want to lose that ever. I can't remember who that coach was, but who would who would do away with this game? Yeah, I mean, there'd, be, there'd be riots in the streets. I mean, the place was packed. I mean, everybody's having a good time. Yeah, great game. Yeah, I mean, you got you got to keep that rivalry. Yeah, well, there's more connection between us and Appen County than any county around us. And that border war's fun. Yeah. Like I said, you can't say border war anymore. That's not PC. Border is not a PC word anymore. You have to say county line skirmish. I'm like, I'm like oh, fine, but I'm, I, still, I still call the Georgia-Florida game the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. Can't do that. It's not PC, Bob. We live in a yeah. PC society. Can't defend nobody uh, in any type of way. It is what it is. <laughs> you can have 10,000 people watch something and you offend one person. The whole thing has to be There's changed. There's a reason they never play that game at night. <laughs> It goes in tonight. They, well, I mean, they've locked it in at 3.30. I mean, yeah. they never talk about it being a 7.30 p.m. game. No, it's, uh, it's not like a home uh, LSU game, right? No. Those home LSU games at night, are, they're rocking and rolling, aren't they, Bob? Those Georgia Southern fans, they went out there. They, they just learned what I was talking about. <laughs> they did? <laughs> I told them, you're going to see a wild atmosphere out there. They start drinking at 6 in the morning. Those Cajuns know how to, how, how to get down, huh? Raging Cajuns. Wow. I talked to several Georgia Southern fans that went out there. They had, they had a good time. Well, good. Even though they didn't win the game, they had a, they yeah, had a good, yeah. good trip. Just you know, put that big old check in the back of the bus and came home. That's one of those bucket lists. you gotta, you got to see a game in LSU on a Saturday night. I mean, it's one of those things you just have to do. I'd love to do that, and I'd love to, um, to, to go through the um, – What's it called there at Mississippi? Uh, the Grove. Uh, the Grove. I'd love yeah. to go through to the Grove. You know, yeah. if, you, if you ever go to a Georgia game, a lot of times people don't make it to the old campus. But you really want to go to the old campus up there along Broad Street and see 
the tent set up and all that up under those big trees, stately trees and the old buildings and so forth. And, and I'd love to be able, and I've seen that several times, but I really like to go to the Grove there at Mississippi and then be at an LSU game at night. For years, they outlawed alcohol on that old campus, but they lifted that van. I went to Notre Dame game, went through old campus. There is parties everywhere. Yeah. One, one, one place had a, I had a bartender, open bar, the whole thing. Well, that's where the deep pockets are, Bob. I guess. The deep pockets are an old campus in them teams. You, you walk through there and you see the deep they pocket own, contributors there at Georgia. Up. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, that's right. The I deep pocket that. contributors are up there in so old campus. They did away with this on old campus, but apparently mm-hmm. not. So. To get a tent set up here, you have to give at least a million dollars to our foundation. <laughs> <laughs> That's still a beautiful part of campus. Oh, it's it's gorgeous up there in old campus at Athens. Well, Bob, we're about out of, t- out of time. Anything else on your mind this morning? Okay, like I said, the city meets tonight. We'll have a full report tomorrow here on the local news. City okay. Just- have a great day. All right, the world-famous Butch and Bob Show brought to you by Murphy Builder Supply, where the builders buy, located on Northeast Broad Street in downtown Jessup, and by Nips Car Wash, located on Highway 301 South, just down McDonald's there on the left-hand side. they got that new laser-guided automatic car wash. The world-famous Butch and Bob Show.